fats, also known as lipids, are hydrophobic. They are nonpolar, and that means they will not easily dissolve in the lumen of the small intestine. And that's exactly why many fat molecules and many lipid molecules combine to form particles known as fat globules inside our lumen. Now, that's exactly why we use bile to break down the fat globules into much smaller units in a process known as emulsification and then we digest those smaller units and we form myocils. Myocils are very small, very tiny spheres that contain a fatty acid or a cholesterol molecule and these myocils are so small and that means they can easily pass across the membrane of enterocytes. So myocils fuse with the membrane and they bring the fatty acids into the cells of our small intestine into the enterocytes. And once inside the cells, these fatty acids form triglycerides in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So a triglyceride contains three fatty acids and a single glycerol. Now, within the lumen of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of enterocytes, many of these triglycerides as well as cholesterol and phospholipid molecules combine to form a particle known as the chylomicron. Now, the chylomicron also contains proteins and that means it must be modified in the Golgi apparatus and because it contains fats, lipids, as well as proteins, a chylomicron is a lipoprotein. In fact, the chylomicron is the largest type of uh, lipoprotein as we'll see in just a moment. So this is what the chylomicron actually looks like. So inside, in the core, at the center, we have thousands of cholesterol and triglyceride molecules as shown in green and orange. Now we also have this single layer of phospholipids that protects the hydrophobic core from the hydrophilic solution found in our surrounding environment. And we also have these proteins known as apoproteins. Apo simply means the protein does not have its substrate, it doesn't have its coenzyme or cofactor attached to the protein. Now we can also call the apoprotein an apolipoprotein because the apoprotein is attached to our lipid as shown. This is the hydrophilic section of the protein and this is the hydrophobic section. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, these apoproteins are used to actually recognize this chylomicron. They are used to attach onto special receptor proteins found on the membrane of certain target cells. So the majority of the fats or lipids inside the enterocytes, inside the cells of the small intestine are stored and packaged in these particles known as chylomicrons. Now notice the chylomicron is not a molecule but a particle and the difference is a particle consists of thousands of these different molecules. So inside we have thousands of these fat molecules, we have the phospholipids and we also have the proteins. Now our chylomicrons exit our basolateral membrane side of the enterocyte and they basically go directly into our lacteal which ends up in our lymph system. So this is in contrast to proteins and sugars that end up in the blood system. These chylomicrons first go into our lacteal, into our lymph system before they end up in our blood system. So once inside the lacteal they travel via the lymph vessels and eventually they're dumped into our our blood system via the thoracic duct which is found in the neck that basically connects with the left subclavian vein. So what this basically means is the chylomicron before actually going inside our blood system it first travels through our lymph vessel and this is in contrast to amino acids and sugars that go directly into our blood system via our enterocytes found in the small intestine. 
Now, once inside the bloodstream, once inside the blood plasma, these chylomicrons will travel to their target cells, which are usually liver cells and fat cells, also known as adipocytes. So what happens is these chylomicrons use their apoproteins to basically bind to special receptor proteins found on the membrane of endothelial cells that line the blood capillaries in our blood vessel system. So the, the membrane of these endothelial cells contains special proteolytic enzymes known as lipoprotein lipases and these are responsible for breaking down the triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, once on the membrane, the, uh, once the chylomicron is on the membrane of these uh, endo endolethial cells, the lipoprotein lipase breaks down these triglycerides and those fatty acids, those glycerol molecules and those cholesterol molecules can then easily diffuse into the target cell, the liver or the fat cell. And once inside the liver or the fat cell, these fatty acids and glycerol can once again be used to form triglycerides in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And now we store these triglycerides until the body needs to use energy. So if we have plentiful of energy inside our body, our cells do not have to use triglycerides, but if we need energy in certain cells in our body, the liver and fat cells can release these fatty acids into our blood system. And now, because these fatty acids cannot dissolve in the blood plasma, they must be carried by special protein carriers known as albumin. So basically, the fatty acids, the fats, travel from the small intestine to our blood system via our chylomicrons. But once those fats actually end up in the target liver and fat cells, when they are released into our blood system once again, then they travel in our blood via albumin. So albumin is the protein carrier that, carry, that carries fatty acids inside our blood plasma. Now, Earlier, I mentioned that our chylomicron is the largest type of lipoprotein. Now, lipoproteins are basically molecules that contain protein components as well as lipid components, and lipoproteins are often used to transport fats inside our blood plasma, as we just saw. And there are five different categories of lipoproteins. One of them is the chylomicron. Another two important types, two important categories of lipoproteins are the low density lipoprotein or LDL and the high density lipoprotein or HDL. Now, LDL are those lipoprotein particles that are responsible for carrying the fat from the liver or small intestine and to our fat cells. And these are the and these are the lipoproteins that are found attached to our blood capillaries. And that's exactly why if we have a high concentration of LDL inside our blood, that is a bad thing because it can lead to clogging of our blood vessels, a condition known as atherosclerosis. On the other hand, we also have high density lipoproteins or HDL. And these are the lipoprotein particles that are responsible for actually taking those fats and lipids away and bringing those into the liver to recycle those lipids and to excrete those lipids from our body. So basically LDL are those lipoproteins that are bad for you because in large amounts they can clog the arteries, they can clog the blood vessels and our HDL are the good lipoproteins because they basically break down, they take those uh, lipids and fats, they bring them to liver cells and the liver cells recycles and breaks down those lipids. 